This is actually the first video that I'm actually mad I have to do. And I'm not mad at the situation itself. It's a fucking competition. I'd do the same thing if I lost. But at some point, we gotta draw a line and cut the cap. But let me give you a backstory because this video is gonna be one of those random videos that really ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But I just wanna post it on my channel because holy hell, bro. So as many of you know at this point, I'm a co-host on the podcast known as Let's Keep It A Buck, where we basically talk shit about basketball, then transition to music, sometimes even anime. It's quite literally what I want this channel to be, but this channel got stuck in the basketball niche or whatever. But either way, the podcast is basketball oriented as well. And as of this recording, our most recent episode had a draft between all the players currently in the NBA. Had a couple of you guys' favorite content creators on there. I'll definitely put their links in the description below. And if you want to check out the episode yourself, you can as well. That will be in the description as well. But I'm not here to just promote the pod or promote those creators. What I'm here to do is actually address those creators. Because, bro, I fucking won. Stop it. And I know how this may seem because because we did an all-time draft with like low clicking them and low and click clearly in my opinion had a better team than mine and it'd be weird of me if i didn't acknowledge the fact that while they didn't post a video talking about oh i won the draft but then the first time i win a draft i'm over here like yeah i won while i am a toxic bastard that would do some shit like that no i'm not being a sore winner this is genuinely a response to some of the creators who hit me up following the draft with absurdly bad takes trying to justify how their team would beat mine in a seven game series and it's just not the case it's just like bro it's not it, you lost it's okay you lost so i know it's a random video it's probably not going to translate that well i really don't give a shit any fucking way but in this video i'm going to show why this team the team that i drafted on that episode clearly won compared to every other team on the board let's get right to it damo i'm saving you for a bit later starting off with omar and dkm these two teams were voted as the bottom two of the draft and rightfully so in my opinion both of them didn't really give me a lot of pushback omar swears he won because he has luca dkm swears he won because he sells tickets i don't think i need to spend too much time as to why my team beats this team if you got omar dk and beat me cool let's move on next up my boy double d who's on fucking time and i love that for you my boy now double d oddly enough was one of the two creators that actually concede that my team was just straight up better than his i must concede it's odd that of everyone here double d is the one that did that because double d's team gives my team the most problems in my opinion a pick and roll with curry and Jokic, or Jokic being able to catch the ball on the block and have curry run around literally gives me nightmares no cap like i don't think we have anything for that i think that's just something we gotta live with and third option donovan mitchell is just nuts and while john collins was a reach he's a pretty good player to sub in for randall to pair alongside Jokic, which again would be nasty but as i said on the pod and he agreed with me when i said it so hopefully none of you guys are about to give me pushback for it i know the audience live at the time didn't i'm sorry it sounds so simple for some of you this is about to be a casual take but you just take a team like that and punch him in the mouth yes he has stephen curry and nicola Jokic but fun fact my team actually just shoots better than his any fucking way so i'm not worried about getting necessarily outscored every game and while i concede his offense is gonna get his sometimes or should i say the starting five we'll get to the bench in a minute we're gonna get a couple of stops for the sheer fact we have clay thompson and joel and b let alone with sga katie on the weak side and if christian wood needs to get replaced from Macau bridges we can definitely make that happen so while his offense is gonna get his essentially what i'm saying is that we have some way of limiting it but on the other end of the court double d himself would concede he has nothing for my team not even just my starting five my entire team he has nothing his bench is way too small yes i just previously said they play good perimeter defense but they're way too small for the offense not to be as guaranteed and i love jared allen i love that he's not a bitch and will meet anybody at the rim jared allen isn't solo squad in the interior defense for that team it's not gonna happen be a cool little series i think he does give me some problems because again i have to concede offense to him but at least i can guard him somewhat he can't guard me at all and he knows that so let's just move on now prior to round six Six B Souls' team was looking like the team that I was gonna say, all right, they're gonna give me some bump. And John Morant on the bench is crazy, but I'm not gonna lie, Benjamin. Stop it. I'm well aware you can stagger players, but hypothetically, if you were to throw out Ja, Ben, Tobias Harris, KP, and Fred Van Fleet, yeah, you watch what happens. I'd be the first one to say people give Ben and Tobias a lot of shit, but no, that bench is not good compared to the other benches on this board. Not at all. Three of your bench players literally have an identity crisis every time they play basketball, and one of them still trying to get that swagger back from 2019. Jaws cool though, for sure. But let's go the route of, oh, I'm gonna stagger minutes, this, that, and the third. None of the staggers really make sense though. Like, yeah, swapping out Ja for your point guard, cool, whatever. When Kawhi Leonard comes off the court for Tobias Harris, I'm jumping for joy, I'm sorry. When Ben Simmons comes on the court for either a power forward or a point guard, I'm laughing at you. Again, I know Ben gets a lot of shit, but no, seriously, I'm laughing at you. You've just made a black hole in your offense for no reason. Ben Simmons for nobody in your starting five really makes sense unless you just want to ruin your 
spacing or take the ball out of James Harden's hands, which in that case, do it. Kristaps Porzingis plays like he's 5'11", so I don't even care about that. I have great defense for KP starting or on the bench. So if he got the ball, we already know how low his offensive value could be. Then let's factor the fact that we know he plays with Luka Doncic. We've seen how low his value is with Luka. You're telling me with James Harden, that's not going to have a similar effect on him? Oddly enough, KP is one of those guys that like need his touches to keep going. And I know it's fun to call KP fodder. I understand he's not fucking fodder. But I'm telling you right now, if you're ever about to play through KP for a couple plays, yeah, we'll see you out the door and fall. Me personally, I don't see how your team really complements each other or works that well. I know you probably believe so. You probably can argue it or somebody will in the comments below. But I just don't really see it. Your team consistently asks one or two players to cover the weaknesses of eight, especially regarding defense. Kawhi Leonard is not solo squatting the bad perimeter defense you have. And rim protection, you don't even have somebody to fix that for you. I'm sorry. I'm not scared of KP. And while DeAndre Ayton isn't necessarily a chair, I have Vooch and Joel Embiid, bro. Let's even go to the mile and say DeAndre just locks up Nikola. Fine. Whatever. I don't care how much better y'all think Giannis is better than Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid on that low block is doing damn near the same thing Giannis did to his ass on the low block. It's up for a bro named DeAndre. I'm sorry. KP and Ben not saving that, bro. They're not. And while I admit you're one of the three teams that can actually throw a defender at Kevin Durant, as I just explained earlier, you're not the one team on this list that can actually guard Joel and Kevin Durant. Let alone the rest of the team, bro. I'm sorry. Your team's in a pack. And my team shoots way better than yours. Again, I have the best shooting team on the fucking list. But going to the next person, and I really want to talk about you, Jimmer. I love Jimmer, y'all. I love Jimmer, bro. But dog, this man was fighting hard for his team. I tell you, I started a celebratory stream afterwards. Bro was in the chat talking that bullshit. And this is why I'm putting him after I talked about B-Souls. Both of them started this narrative for everybody else who was on the pod. Funny enough, of all people, the chat, the crayon eaters themselves knew this was wrong. But once B-Souls said this, you couldn't tell nobody else shit. But Jimmer would argue, and B-Souls would as well to a lesser degree, that their team defeats my team because my team literally cannot play make or play makes badly or it doesn't play make well enough. Whatever technicality that they want to hold against me. I'm being so serious. I gotta keep the same energy, bro. That is such a bad take. It's not even funny, bro. That's kind of a stupid take, dead ass. Both average six assists. SGA averages six assists on three turnovers. Mike Conley averages six assists on two turnovers. Now, while SGA isn't exactly winning basketball games because, you know, he's on the thunder, Mike Conley's measly six assists and poor playmaking skills just casually led the Jazz to 52 wins. So, yeah, one, let's debunk the notion that Mike Conley's a bad playmaker. Two, are you arguing that I should start Michael Conley over SGA? Like, is that what y'all want? Like, if I started Mike Conley, oh, now I'm a super team. I'm unbeatable. No, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Three and most importantly, if I have to do a video on it, I will. But is playmaking just overrated now? I said it on Twitter. I said it on Twitch. I said it during the pod. And I'll say it again right now. If the argument for this team potentially losing a series is lack of playmaking, while I have two players that average six assists. Man, that's tough. <laughs> Like I promise you, three-point shooting, inside scoring, shot creation in general, perimeter defense, rim protection, matter far more than elite level playmaking. Not even just good playmaking, elite level playmaking. Because if we're going so far as to say that Mike Conley and SGA just can't playmake. All right, go ahead, bro. And going back to SGA, I'm being dead ass, bro. Just watch the fucking Thunder play basketball, bro. If you're saying SGA is a bad playmaker, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just going to shrug my shoulders, let the stat nerds go crazy and move on with my life. That was really the crutch of Jimmer's argument. I mean, when you look at his team, bruh, no, <laughs> it's not happening. No. Now, MJ's team, while he also conceded as well, I'll give MJ this. He does have the best odds of guarding Kevin Durant and Joel Embiid with having Anthony Davis and Jimmy Butler. But offensively speaking, his team is definitely the most wishy-washy by a mile. Offensively, you could argue with Trey Young, Devin Booker, and hell, even Anthony Davis, offensive consistency is one of their biggest issues. And then outside of Jamal Murray and maybe Gordon Hayward, the rest of his team's offense, to me, personally is just not that good i'm not gonna hold you it's just not that good personally i think he went wrong when he took jimmy number two i think that's what really started it all for him and while mj will say he does love his team he did concede on the pod so if y'all think he beats me that's power to you but he literally said he doesn't so i'm gonna count that as a dub and move on now we get to domo and dom i saved you for last not because i think you're my biggest comp double d is my biggest comp but this nigga domo done shotgun me on twitter dog bro hit me with like five different tweets saying five different 
different things about five micro arguments. What the fuck? I didn't even know what to say at some points. I was just like, whatever, bro. And Dom, you know I love you, bro. And your team is good. But you tripping big shoes talking about your team actually beats my team. I could end the argument with you at fucking Bull Bull. And I'll be the first one to tell you that I think Bull Bull should play and or get traded. Because I don't think he's a scrub. But what the hell is he doing here, bro? Like, what is he here for? He does not belong in this draft at all. I could go the route of saying we are fucking your bench up via corner cuts, corner threes, putbacks, post ups, and smack defense. I could talk about just the straight up core weaknesses of your team, such as fucking Anthony Edwards and consistent ass. And I love Anthony Edwards, but he's another player that honestly probably shouldn't be here. Or the fact that essentially Giannis is going to go through hell having to guard both Joel Embiid and Kevin Durant because either fucking way, one of them eats. While on the opposite end, I have arguably the best matchup for Giannis, you know, your best player, but I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to simply debunk all the things you spam me on Twitter about. So let's go see what you said. I'm going to explain how incorrect those takes are, and I'm going to end the video. So Damo hits me up on how is your team actually better than mine? I'm like, you're trolling, right? He's like, bring it on, and I essentially go on to why my team is better. The first red flag where I knew I was going to be in it for the long haul is when this nigga said the shooting edge is minuscule at best. Bro, I know you made that team. You love that team. You're entitled to love your team. And if I had lost the poll by that wide of a margin, I would stand my team too. But this is quite literally not true. Like, it's just not true, bro. Like, you cannot say that. That is not true. It's not a debate. It's factually incorrect. My worst shooter is who? Joel Embiid? The guy that takes three threes a night on around 37, 38% shooting? And some of those threes are self-created rather than just catch and shoot? Versus you having Giannis Antetokounmpo, who literally shoots worse. Bol Bol, who is on an insanely small sample size, still shoots worse than Joel Embiid, technically. And I would argue consistently wise, Joel Embiid's a better shooter. Because if Bol Bol was really a better shooter than Joel Embiid, he'd probably be getting minutes. Anthony Edwards shoots 33% on seven threes a night. And Jonas isn't even a shooter. He doesn't even attempt a three a game. But even if we wanted to just be ball reference only and only look at three point percentage, Joel Embiid still higher than him. You also have DeJounte Murray shooting 32% from the three point line. Jeremy Grant shoots 35% from the three point line. Six out of 10 players on your team don't even have a better three point percentage than Joel Embiid. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. Your four best shooters being Kyrie Irving, Jason Tatum, Malcolm Brogdon, and D'Angelo Russell can indeed shoot the three ball. None of those names are even a top two shooter on my team. You know, the team with Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. And in fact, if we average your team's three-point percentage, even giving you the boost of Jonas and Bol Bol, who don't even shoot a three a night, your team's three-point percentage comes up to 36.05. My team? 40.67. That's also me being generous and nerfing Clay to not his career average, but what he did last season. That's also me being generous, and again, I gave you Bol Bol and Jonas, who, yes, they inflated your numbers. Because if we left their percentages out, you get 35.77%. My team shoots way better than you bro next take defensively it's not sweet because he's gonna have jeremy grant on kevin durant and Giannis at the five on joel and b i'm not wasting my time here with this shit all right Giannis and joel and b damn near cancel each other out on the court considering he has Giannis playing center no i'm not implying joel and b is just as good as Giannis. but if both of them are going to be playing center even if he has Giannis run a quote quote point center considering Giannis, you know ain't tween tween step back three material again they pretty much cancel each other out even if you you want to slightly and i mean slightly favor Giannis here but i swear to god i'm gonna say this once and one time only if a team's game plan for guarding kevin durant is to simply throw jeremy grant at him unless kevin durant got a whole meme team katie and five nigga if not four. Oh my god i'm not doing this jeremy grant can be a good solid defender all he want to be he's not fucking with katie we know that next take bench wise my team is not fucking with the rotations he has that's just not true at all i mean at all oh my god his bench is small the spacing's horrible and can't even rim protect hell he has ball ball out there what are we doing and i brought up the fact that even though the pod members may think that my fucking playmaking's trash it still might be better than his playmaking i already talked about it earlier it quite literally is statistic wise common sense wise it literally is comparable literally he then goes on to say that my big depth is the issue yes my front court's depth is the issue here totally and then if he starts off small and subs in JV and Bol Bol, I won't know what to do. I swear to God, if you play through JV and Bol Bol off the bench... <laughs> 
Okay, bro, that's one. Two, what stops me from putting Macau Bridges in instead of Christian Wood? If you did go small, but I probably wouldn't do that anyway because I don't need to do that. Three, you know Macau Bridges is going to be on the weak side and Vooch averages 12 boards, right? I don't know what you think is sweet about that, but no, it's not. Especially when the scoring threat in that situation is Bull Bull and Jonas Valanciunas. I promise you, we ain't going to die, bro. He then says portability, which makes me think this nigga's trolling, and talks about D'Lo and Murray's playmaking as well as Anthony Edwards defense that just doesn't even apply here I don't even know why he said that Vooch is the main scorer off the bench Anthony Edwards is not that good defensively yet not saying he won't ever be guys but right now come the fuck on D'Angelo Russell's damn near a chair and Bo Bo's playing basketball so who cares I'm being dead ass if I really wanted to just be toxic and casual with it my bench to your bench all I'm gonna do is run five out iso D'Lo and dare someone to cheat you have nothing for that like literally nothing for that and even if somehow Norman Powell couldn't get Buck or Mike Conley couldn't get buckets, dump that bitch to Vooch. Anyone that doubles Vooch, we're kicking out to a 40% shooter. And if you got Jonas locking up Vooch too, you know what, my nigga, you got it. He then turns it into some 2K shit talking about, well, my big three would be your big three, duh, 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 duh. which respectfully I found corny because it was like, okay, my nigga, then let's run twos. That drop off is way worse, but we're not even gonna talk about that. Hypothetically, if they were to run fucking threes because that's all basketball would be in this situation, I assume the matchups would be Joel Giannis, Katie Tatum, Kyrie Clay. Unless we're about to memeably downplay Clay's defense on Kyrie, which fair enough, people do mean that. I'm being dead ass when I say my team still got those, bro. One KD to Tatum, I'm taking all day. Tatum's not a chair, but it's Kevin fucking Durant. Two and more importantly, I swear to God, if you have Giannis, you have Jason Tatum, and you're like, nah, bro, Kyrie's gonna drop 40 every night, and you think that team's gonna be my team? You hit your head. Like, I just know niggas not about a first option Kyrie me and say, yep, that's why I win basketball. Hell the fuck no and again it's not a part game if it was again let's run twos so the moral of the story is my team is better than your team and for a majority of the arguments they're not opinions they're facts my team would quite literally be better yeah damn i hate that i love these niggas dog and before any of y'all do y'all bitching i'm sending them an unlisted version of this video they've already seen it and or already approved of me talking my shit about it on the goddamn channel i know how some of y'all gonna go because it's y'all favorite creators oh my god say you're such a dick, unsubbed, I hate you. You know what, actually, good. If you're a sensitive bitch, get out of here. No cap. But before you leave, I'm just glad you know that I won this shit. And that's gonna do it for today's video. It's been your boy, TSO Sage. Got love for all these creators, especially the Keep It A Buck brothers. Links will be in the description. And if you guys like the video, like the video. If you like my content, subscribe. Why the fuck you watching my shit and you're not subscribed? And it's been your boy, TSO Sage. I'ma holla at y'all later.